Good evening, everypony, and welcome to Commentary's Magic Stream on today, Sunday, June 27th, 2021. I am, as always, Grand Paws. Big Cheese. Our cat. And... And Ivory Starlight, you said it too late, therefore I thought you weren't going to say it. Double and. That's fine. Don't worry about it. And, and, and. Mean old and. Yep. And we are here in the first stream following the open beta release of Fond Memories. Open beta? What's that? It's a beta, but instead of being closed, it's open. You know, to the people. Let's see here, I can't read any of this stuff. There we go. Now I can read most of this. There we go. I don't uh, know how to read. That's unfortunate. That would... Something snarky comment about card balance in previous sets and explaining a lot. Hmm. Anyway, so yep. open beta. Um, kind of like last time with the very tail end of the New Dawn uh, release cadence. There was a short period of time where we're like, hey, check out all this stuff. Uh, this time we're doing it a little bit sooner, like a lot bit sooner, in fact. Like, before art and flavoring is done for the most part sooner. Yeah. Because it turns out that when you put a bunch of players together trying to tackle one massive um, challenge or task, you get more feedback and more sets of eyes to catch potential glaring errors that otherwise would escape us from having stared at them for the last three to four months straight. Which is helpful. On, like, a productive scale. On a fun scale, it means that everyone who wants to can kind of start brewing and deck building in advance of these cards becoming available. Well, you shouldn't get too happy about brewing here, because if you find something really busted and, you know, we fix it, it uh, doesn't work for real. Well, sure, but... Just, you know, thought I'd point that one out. Yeah, that's fair. Nothing, nothing is final, everything is subject to change, yada yada yada. That being said, hopefully we try to keep the cards as close to their current incarnations as possible. Speaking of the cards and their current incarnations, that's kind of the point of today's stream. Unfortunately, with the release of Open Beta so early, it means that spoiler season takes kind of a different approach. Art. Yes. Art and flavor spoilers. But people still like hearing discussions on individual cards and focusing on new mechanics or new ideas. And when there's over 150 cards in a set, even if you're looking at the full document, it's easy to forget that something is there. So we thought we'd take some time this evening and highlight a few cards for each of us that we are especially excited about for either deck ideas that we already have in mind, or maybe just future potential. Yeah. So, so do we uh, want to just dive in? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Even Ivory, who can't read, that's correct. He, threw, oh. he, he had images of the cards up on his wall and just threw darts at them. That one. I, I really, I picked the Space Invader pictures that I like the best. That look the most like Space Invaders? I hope that's actually what you did. That's kind of amazing if that's the case. Probably not. No, it's totally what I did. It has nothing to do with the fact that the cards I picked are cards you would expect me to pick. No, definitely not. All right. So, chosen here is currently under the playtest name Changeling Factory. It's a yellow resource, two cost, three rec, four power, play to your home. Main phase, exhaust this card to choose one of your token friends. Other token friends you control are copies of the chosen friend until the end of the turn. I probably don't need to say anything regarding Yellow's ability to generate tokens between 
all of the critter synergies like um, cockatrice migration, friends are always there, Yona, friend of spiders, all of that. Spiders. Um, Celestia, raptor razor, uh, Twilight and Fluttershy. There's just all kinds of stuff that can generate critter tokens, which is nice. Uh, what is also nice is the fact that there are other ways that we have in core right now of generating additional tokens, specifically token copies of other friends. We have Herd of Adoring Fans, which is a yellow-white resource that when you play it on a friend with cost two or less, puts a token copy of that card into play, so that's kind of cool. We also have Discord's Second Opinion, who can make a token copy of a friend that he dismisses wherever he enters play. And we have uh, Trixie, who makes a very brief token copy of a friend before that token copy is banished, unless you can prevent it from leaving play, like with Brian, which is in yellow. So that's kind of fun. Or Golden Parachute, which is, you know, in your discard pile. So it just has to be a token friend, right? Any token friend. And, as currently, wor as currently worded, this means that any token friends that would enter play during the rest of your turn after this point enter play as whatever the chosen card is. I'm kind of sad that the way the game's rules work, I can't choose a unique friend and then donate this to my opponent and trash their entire field. Yeah. You no, cannot... if this if this worked on unique friends, the only answer is I'm going to make a million spoons. Spoons. Now, obviously, that's not allowed, but if it was allowed, it'd be funny. Mm -hmm. It would be extremely funny, and that's why it doesn't work that way. Yep. Well, they become copies. So yeah. Yeah, I like I like Beagle's answer of using the thorax tricorn first. All your token copies become token copies of thorax. If you can make a token copy of Thorax. Like your main Thorax? <laughs> no, no, the, the Tricorn Thorax. Tricorn, oh, yeah. Okay. So there's obviously a lot of goofy stuff that can do, and I chose this not because I think there's any single deck that's going to use it, although there definitely is one that just tries to make a bunch of bunyips, and that's, you know, aggressive and probably bunyips. scores a lot of points and is probably the most competitive version. But there's so much janky stuff you can do with this that I'm more excited to see like the off-the-wall interactions that people find with it. And by the way, when you start going back into um, when you start going back into adventure or harmony formats, this thing gets really dumb. Hmm. Like furball. I don't even remember what Furball does. Makes a critter token when it enters play. <laughs> uh, yeah. You should remember what Furball does. You used to run the Zippo. Yes, I ran Zippo Tricks Makeup Lord. At two cost, um, it's and no activation cost. This is pretty efficient, and you can probably end up doing some really silly things with this if you can find ways to use Herd of Adoring Fans. Um, beyond just Bunyip. So that's likely to be pretty fun. Um, it's not likely to come up a whole lot in draft because it is a super rare and there aren't a whole lot of ways of making other types of tokens apart from, you know, the standard tokens. But hey, even turning all of your critters into rock tokens in a second method is pretty cool. So yeah, it can be fun. Anyway, that's all I got on this one for now. All right. Uh, let's see. Next up. I think Cheese had a fun one here. To the dungeon. I one mean, million years dungeon. Yes. No trial. Unexpected. So, I think this card potentially makes Troublemaker Control viable again. Because um, it really just hasn't been viable for a while. Um, being able to immediately banish an opposing friend. Has to be involved in face-off, but there's lots of ways to make that happen. Um, is quite useful. The wreck is like you don't only have to be in these two colors, but it's uh, 
pretty powerful card, mostly because of the one cost. Yeah, like if this very... was two cost, I don't think it'd be nearly as interesting. Yeah, it's very cheap. This makes a very large bang. Because there are no restrictions on this. Nope. Just has to be involved in the face-off. And Tempest Troublemaker Control used to run several copies of Stick anyway, so you've got some good ways of starting face-offs, even excluding the Troublemaker thing. Yeah, like targeting specific runs. Mm -hmm. There are very few friends that Banishing does not affect. Oh, you do have to worry about... Uh, One of those is Yona. Because Yona's yeah. just annoying. Yona is very annoying, that's true. You've also but... got to worry about... Uh, let's see, Bunyip doesn't work. I think uh, Big Twilight does work, though. Oh, you mean uh, Brian, not Bunyip? Uh, yeah, Brian. Yeah, yeah, I was like, what? Now, Big Twy can still, because um, it's when she would leave play. Yeah, and Brian will affect banishment as well. Yeah. All right. Eh, okay. So there are some defenses against this, which are actually quite annoying. But That being said, one cost nearly unconditional removal inside of face-offs is up there with some of the strongest removal we've ever seen printed. The two-color thing means, like you say, it is, it is going to be more niche than belly flop, but I think that's probably okay. Yeah. If you're running the type of control that would run this, you're in those two colors anyway, let's be honest. Yeah. Probably. Or at least oh. you've got decent enough access to them. This also costs 1 AT, which means not only can you duplicate it with Professor Twy when someone's above 8 points, or Headmare Twy, I'm sorry, uh, but if, you're, if your name is Leo and you're running the Starlight Glimmer Magic Instructor, like, have a field day. Uh, yep. Oh, there's just... There's just layers in complexity here. This is... This is a card that I think has a really high skill cap. Delicious. Yep. It's going to be good. What's next? Uh, this one's mine. So this one's named Waifu Basket Weaver. You can blame Grandpa's for that name. Uh, so let's see. Chaos, when you flip this card, you may shuffle a card from a discard pile in its owner's deck. That's kind of cool, I guess. Whatever. I'm way more interested in the, the main phase ability, though. Banish this card to shuffle a discard pile into its owner's deck. Hey. Hey. Reanimator over there? Hey. Stop it. No, I, I don't want to. You're already S stopping me with Sun Ambulus Blindfold. Stop it. Yeah, but now you... Now it's like, if you get rid of the Blindfold, you still don't get anything because there's nothing there to reanimate. Right. And like... You can also sit there and be like, oh, Pinky's out of cards to, to throw at people. Except. Oh. oh, wait, what's this? And then she's, you know, fully re restocked and rearmed. Or, boy, my opponent playing Living to Laugh has only three cards left in deck and multiple, you know, golden parachutes. It sure would be a shame if they had to start all over. Oh, yeah, golden parachute counter. Nice. And then they lost the living to laughs. Rip. Rip. So, I'm looking forward to whatever this ends up being, because this is just going to be obnoxious. And if there's one thing that pink is good at, it's good at being obnoxious. Uh, let's see. Next one. Next one. This is mine. Uh, one, two, punch. Uh, three cost, three wreck in blue and pink, three power. Griffin friend, hasty, competitive one, and eccentric one. If an opposing friend was frightened or dismissed this turn, you may pay three AT less to play this card. Hey, what are what is blue like doing as far as, like, uh controlling tactics goes it's like blue and pink like either scaring or rem 
dismissing your things. Yeah. Hey, so, isn't this card blue and pink? Yeah. Isn't that great? You can scare a thing, and then you can play this for free, and then, oh look, I have another one in my hand. Let's play another one for free. Oh, that's disgusting. You can actually drop multiple of these at once, can't you? Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Why not a third? I have all three in my hand. Yep. Because you've been drawing cards. Hot Wings, you might have a new staple here. Um... Yeah. It's hard to see this as not a very, very lucrative option. Yeah, it's pretty far up there, isn't it? Yeah, this has everything that these two colors like. It can be played at hasty speed. It's got competitive one and eccentric one. So it dips into those two aspects. And as you're frightening and dismissing stuff, you just got yourself a free three body. We've also got some Griffin synergies with a few of the new Harmony Griffin cards. So that's going to be kind of cool. We all know how much we love Griffin Tribal these days. I know how much fun I'm going to have trying to find art for this. <laughs> just, like, cram every Griffin in the show. Like, just Photoshop all of them together and use that. Oh, Katamari Griffin? Okay, I'm, I'm down. Yeah. Because they're being dismissed and they're all very scared because they're being rolled up into a ball. Makes perfect sense. This will be a lot of fun, especially if you can follow up um, a Wrath of Gilda with, oh no, my board is empty, psych. <laughs> uh, gotta have the rec for it, though. That might be the hard part there. Hey, motivational speech exists. Hopefully. Uh, next one? Next one! Oh look, there's actual art for this one. Oh! Oh no. Release me. That's, That's what promo. I said when I, saw the, when I saw the art for this. I'm like, where's the release me? That's on the promo, don't worry about it. I hope it is actually on the promo. In the meantime, this is, this is Yeet the baby. Yeet! The royal family, heart swarming guests. 333 three, three in pink and white. Hasty, when you play this card, each player may put a friend or resource from their hand into play. I hate it. When I was in kindergarten, my favorite time of day was show and tell. And now I can do it as an adult. In that, I'll show my opponent what I'm going to put into play, and then they'll tell me why that's a bad idea when they pick their card second. Correct. Yeah. Ultimately, is this card going to be, like, good? Mm, there's a good chance it is. Anything that allows you to cheat cards into play is likely to be powerful. But, because of the way that the NLP card game handles simultaneous decisions compared to other card games, this sort of effect is actually far worse than it would normally be in other games, and it's already kind of iffy. Uh, you will announce what card you're choosing, then your opponent will announce what card they're choosing, then they'll both enter play simultaneously. So, you better hope that your opponent isn't holding on to, like, an, when this card enters play, frightened, or dismiss an opposing friend, or something along those lines, or you're going to have a bad time. Uh, I'd actually have to go look at this, because I think this is in turn player order. So if you play this on your opponent's turn, this it's gets a little bit more spicy. It's whoever who it's whoever most recently had priority. You most recently had priority. Mm, okay. And then I think that's the same thing with the triggers. Dang. Correct. Yeah. So that being said, if your opponent has friends that are just value oriented instead of, you know, being dismissal and or resources, we need to say or resources. Um yeah, there's some, there's some shenanigans you can pull here. I especially like the idea of um, playing a royal family to put a redeemed starlight into play and then do that at the end of your opponent's turn and then at the start of your turn play like a five-cost Chrissy 
pink white for free. That seems fun. There's some there's some janky stuff you can do. All, now, all my all my cards are about jank. Now, without cheating, who actually remembers what Redeem Starlight does? Nope. She's redeemed. At the start of your turn, you may play a friend without paying its cost. Play a friend from your hand without paying its cost. So, I spend 3 AT at the end of your turn to put an 8 AT friend into play. Then I use that 8 AT friend to play a 5 AT friend, and I just got 13 AT worth of value for 3. Except my opponent played, like, a Catajack. And then I was sad. Or Desert Road, like Godot suggested in chat. Yeah, this into Desert Road is completely fine. That would mean you're in... Well, your opponent could be playing Orange, I suppose. Well, and the other thing as well here is this card helps you bypass color requirements. You could run all kinds of ridiculous color requirements of friends and resources and just rely on having this card. You're going to cram this into Reanimator, aren't you? Of course he is. What do you I think, think there's I think there's two copies in there. Uh, as for Desert Road and this card entering play, because they both enter play simultaneously, Desert Road won't be around long enough for the as effect to work. So whatever card you choose to put into play, even if your opponent puts in a Desert Road, it will still have its abilities. Right. All right. Um, yeah, also this is a rare, so this might end up showing up in draft. Play with caution. Or with reckless abandon. Either is fine. Alright, who's next? More royalty. Let's see. Ah, <clears throat> uh, yes. Wait, this one's me? Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, okay. Is you. I was used to the other art for her and her older, older name, but yes. Uh, Princess Kate, it's friends of the family. Um, so she has a home at a two on her start side, but flips basically by um, uh, exceeding home limit. <clears throat> and this seems pretty bad, but I think there's some really interesting things you can do with this. Like turn two, you can play a bunch of low-cost friends that do things when they enter play or are useful from home. Uh, for instance, um, uh, Derpy, yeah, yeah, uh, Party, Mayor. Party Mayor, that's her name. Um, I think there's some that you could like get a card off of, and then just some other low cost friends. And so now you've you've paid your AT to to flip, but you've actually gotten some value out of it. Yeah, Tiny Eager. Although didn't that change behavior? Uh, Angel Wings is going to be a little bit harder because you need the other color too. I mean, but maybe I guess if you first played a um, just like some blue entry, you could do that. You could do a uh, rush makeover in the blue. Yeah, yeah, I think there's some good options. Um, but then on her her flip side, she actually has some some pretty useful abilities. Again, you're going to be playing a low cost deck because this is your second friend. Um. They either get bigger, so this is like interesting for well, potentially interesting for um, mosh pit style decks. Um, although it's really hard to to beat uh, removal once per turn cycle. Um, this is definitely another option there. Yeah, because uh, it's the like deck... plus two power, but um, or just drawing an extra card. Yeah, the deck composition, I don't think, is going to be incredibly similar. This. Cadence is much more willing to put up with two cost friends than Pinky is. Yeah. And I think that means that although the main itself isn't going to be quite as impactful, the rest of the deck is going to hit harder as a result. I, I don't know. I feel people are going to underestimate this uh, put a plus one power counter on um, basically two friends. Like, that's pretty strong. That's a lot of power, and especially if you're doing this quite often. Which presumably you'll be doing every turn if you can. I don't can. know if you're going to be able to. Yeah, every turn is going to be a little difficult. I mean, unless. Um, yeah, because it doesn't care about friends entering play. It only cares about you playing friends. Right. So you're going to, like, you're going to need a lot of cards. 
to keep this up. I don't know. I think every other turn, or like two out of three turns. Yeah, I, I think I think you could go pretty consistent on this. And yeah, to your point, uh, you're gonna be dealing with some pretty big friends in not very long. Like this is going to ramp like nobody's business. Yeah. Assuming that you're using the power counter. The other thing that's nice here is if your hand is getting low and you're not running a ton of other sources of additional card draw, being able to drop two friends and then get another card back in hand in addition to the useful effects of the friends you played means you can kind of keep churning through this and really helps you choose if you need to like have these burst turns and get the power, or if you need to try to prep for a future turn and build up your resources. Yes. The the dual aspect, or the dual uh, modes of her boosted side ability are just ridiculously good here. On one hand, gas. On the other hand, a different kind of gas. Gas, gas, gas. Step on the gas. Step on the <laughs> All right, who's next? That would be me. So, who remembers a little card from Premiere called Rarity Truly Outrageous? Nope, not at all. Never nope. seen it in my life. Okay, I like Bugle's comment here. Two gas pedals and no brakes. Never hoid of it. Okay, so... What if that but in event form. It's actually hmm. not quite that, because it's three not repeatable, of, but three rec instead of two, and it's also an event. It could uh, be if that stop was still power, legal. But it is immediate. Uh, and then we're sitting here going, let's just score some points equal to a problem bonus. So... This is kind of ridiculous. I like this in white-blue. It would, in fact, be outrageous. Yeah, I think that's the only place it goes, really. Yes, white-blue, I think, can find lots of interesting ways to make use of this. Although, I do wonder if it's going to have availability of resource issues. I'm, I'm kind of wondering if this is a card that you really ever want a three of. Like, yes, it says score a point on it, which is perennially good, but I don't know if it's three of good. The lady herself has fallen out of favor as of... A while ago. Yeah. A long time ago. The benefit here is that <clears throat> your opponent doesn't know you have this. Right. And Hopefully. It's, right, and it's something where you can be like, oh... Ah, I, I see you let that confront through. Well, I have bad news for you. Right. Generally, your opponent's not going to care if you, like, single confront a high bonus problem. Right. But then you drop one of these things after they've already let the confront through, and then they're just sad. Now, the cute thing about this is this may also find an application in pink-white aggro, if such a thing exists. Because if you, oh, I don't know, draw this off of a Gabby at the end of your turn and still have the three tokens to use it. Ah, uh, I mean, you confronted a problem this turn, so. Just saying. As long as your problem deck has the, the makeup to make this useful. But yeah. Right. Yeah, that could be interesting. I could also see it potentially in white-yellow, since white has a new three bonus problem, and yellow already has the only three bonus problem in core right now. Ooh. So maybe. 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 Oh, you have, like... <laughs> Wait, there's a new combo. You have, like... It's not really a combo, but three of them. Like, I play one, two, three. That's nine points. Plus the one for confronting. It only costs me <laughs> 9 AT. No, what you do is you copy it with Twilight so that you 12 points. You can't. So too much. It costs too much. Unless oh. there, like, there might be some other... Are there any copies that don't say two or less? Yes. Starlight Magic Instructor. You just need her and three other unicorns. 
Uh, yes, Ooh. but like no one plays her. Uh, people play her. You just don't play her. I tried playing her. She doesn't work. <laughs> Do you love how dismissive he is sometimes? Yes. <laughs> it was like, oh, it didn't work for me that one time. It doesn't work. Oh, look, it's it's a card that might make Troublemaker Control viable because it definitely doesn't work. No, nope, sorry, everyone who's been playing it for... Garbage! <laughs> anyway, this card will be fun. Yeah. It's also, if, if we can pause for one quick sec before we go on, um, since this was a set that was designed with limited formats in mind, that's a common... Yep. That's kind of spicy. Might want to consider running white in your limited decks. Just saying. Maybe. All right. Hate, are you, start hate drafting the white mains out of the packs. <laughs> uh, well, Cult Leader Starlight will make sure that you don't have that problem, at least. Yeah. Yeah, but then you don't get the benefit of having a main with a boosted ability. How many spike lava balls can you draft? Good question. I mean, there's no limit on how many you can have in your deck. Uh... Good luck with that one, though. Let's see. Next card? Next card is Day Glider. Uh -huh. another, another Griffin. This one's got a lot going on. We have a 2 cost, 4 blue wreck, 3 power, chaotic, hasty, when you flip the chaos ability when you flip this card draw two cards then discard two cards and when you and another ability when you win a face off by five or more power you may banish this card from your discard pile to score a point so here we have a blue friend that is hasty that is power efficient that also scores points yeah, it does nothing in play except be power efficient. I think this is another card that Bluna is going to look at and just start rubbing her hooves together. Uh, she might. I think you'll probably see this more often in Blue Farm, actually. Maybe? Or, if you want to be really cheeky, I'm sure there's a way you could abuse this in, like, a Living to Laugh Griffin combo deck. I mean... Certainly possible. Put this on top of your deck, the start of a face off, draw a little bit deeper, discard some Spitfires, draw more cards, seems okay. Yeah, you just gotta fit some staffs into the deck. Uh, I'm sure that I'm sure there's a list out there that would use this. But no, there's there's a lot of different ways you can you can take advantage of this card. Um a lot of them involve it not being in play, but that's okay, because sometimes cards are better not in play, they're better other places. Yeah, it's pretty good. We've got some, some real Griffin value going on here. I'm slowly becoming a Griffin tribal fanatic. I've noticed a lot of my a lot of my favorite cards now end up being Griffins. I think you're doing this on purpose, Sara. Uh, those you're gonna have to blame on Grand Paws. Yeah, that one's that one's my fault. Like, Griffins yeah, are actually could... kind of hard to find art for. So if I can make something not a Griffin, I'm gonna make it not a Griffin. It's always I'm, one to use. I'm I'm intentionally making life difficult for him. Griffins. All right. How about how about one more card apiece? That sounds good. All right. Sure. Um, sticking with the same stat line there, two cost, four rec, three power. All right, hold on, hold, hold on. Is this yours? Hold on. Let me, let me, let me read through this real fast. Uh, okay, doesn't say anything about reanimate. This is not a reanimator deck. No. <laughs> I like the, uh, the little space invader, though. It looks like a, like a face. Uh, Two cost, four rec, three power, friend, play with the top card of your deck revealed. You may play friends from the top of your deck as though they were in your hand. 
Immediate, exhaust this card and put the top card of your deck into your discard pile to pay 1 AT less to play your next friend this turn. Templating issues aside, this creates artificial card advantage in a color that has basically never had it. The closest that we really ended up getting to this was with Applejack um, Apple Vendor back in Canterlot Knights that would retire friends you have in play to put a friend from the top three cards of your deck into your hand. Orange did have draw from bottom effects, but with one exception, it could only end up drawing equal to the card it spent. And it only had like two or three of those. It was, it was not very many. Nothing that was even at the level of, like, a pay to draw three. What is interesting here is not only does this give you the ability to run, like, an orange friend-focused, uh, just kind of big orange value deck, but it allows you to also have knowledge of your upcoming flips. It gives your opponent that same knowledge as well, but, you know, knowledge is knowledge. And you can use this immediate ability when it is going to be most advantageous for you to do so. And if you don't like the card that's there, but you don't want to use this card immediately, you can just pay to draw that card. It'll go into your hand and you can play it later. I don't know exactly what deck is going to end up using this, but if we saw pink-orange... Um, mid-range slash aggro um, take Continentals, not last year, but the year before, I have to imagine this card can go somewhere. Maybe. I know at least one person who's going to like this, probably. I think this card is super cool. Plus, Iron Will stats are always good. Sorry, I can't make this an Iron Will. There's already an Iron Will somewhere else. Make it Will of Iron. I don't know. Flim and Flam, maybe? Maybe. There he's running right. some kind of scam. All right, Cheese, what you got? I have a card. It is perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Come Thanos. All players must resolve hand and home limits during each player's wrap-up step. Now I want someone to guess why this card is interesting. Is it because... Specifically for me. Is it because of AU Nightmare Moon? No, because Go Home. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this so is one a... of the problems with Go Home was that it, like, the home limit most of the time didn't really matter. But now you can force them to have to clean up on the end of your turn. So now all your main phase move abilities are strong or stronger. Yes. It's also fun with a Unite Army, but yeah. I mean, to be fair, this is a rare, so you can't use it in Popper Go Home dot deck. Correct. Thank God. But he can run it in draft He's, Go Home yeah, this is why you just use it in limited. Well, we'll see about that. Man, I did, I've been so concentrated on the hand limit thing here that I didn't even consider the, uh, the go home dot deck applications for this card. That's rude. <laughs> I thought that was the point. Yeah, no, that's just the entire interesting part of this card. I don't actually think it'll see much play, but like it, like it's really only for a deck that really punishes homes or, um, uh, hands. I don't know. I it's possible that some of the old white flood your home with token things might like this. Maybe. Yeah, I think there's also some cards that reduce home limit. Um, and being in like doing that a turn earlier is kind of huge, or at least on the same turn that you like have the effect to take place. Yeah. Might have some application. It's gonna. This is one of those cards that I think is maybe not going to show up a lot, but it's going to do something very interesting when it does. 
And then all of a sudden being able to use stuff like levitation meditation or Ponyville emergency, or if we go back even further, cutie pox scare. Or, yes. yeah. CPS. As it's almost like it's, it's not removal, but man, it makes your opponent make some ugly choices. Man. Spicy. Very. Next card. Oh, problem. I was also smart enough to rotate it so we could read it. Hooray! Okay. So, up to the challenge. This is a starting problem. When you challenge a troublemaker here with your main character, if your main character is on its start side, you may pay 2 AT to turn your main character over. So I'd like you to step back a moment and think about what this actually says. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play some troublemaker I'm going to run White Crystal Games Cadence Main up to this thing, fight the Troublemaker, and flip Cadence. So what you're saying is you're building a Love and Gruller farming deck. Yes. It also works for, you know, a big variety of other Good names. That... Why stop? Why would you do that when you could do uh, Bubbly Mare? Instead? Yeah, you could do Bubbly Mare. Or just take your pick of mains that you might want to use for farming that are just a pain to get flipped in the first place. Oh my god, AU Nightmare Moon with Bubbly Mare. Not only do you only get half the amount of cards, but you can only play one each turn. One type each turn. <laughs> And if we go back Man. into Harmony, you can be running Deep Darkness, too. Just punishment everywhere. So yeah, as Bugle says, uh, Professor Twy, potentially. You don't need to rely on, like, what is she? She's confront a flip, isn't she? Ew. She is. That's actually been one of the, that's actually one of the worst parts about that main. Well, I've got a solution for you. I'm going to run the Cutie Mark Crusaders. It's not I... a solution, it's a problem. I'm not going to run the Cutie Mark Crusaders. I see what you did there. They're pretty terrible. They are not great. Yeah, the They lines... are good for one thing. You can play Premier Rarity again. Oh, that's true. Oof. Inspired's back on the menu, boys. I don't even... Wasn't her other thing some kind of taxing? Showy yes! One, I believe. Yeah, it was basically showy one. Back when that was good. Right, but now it doesn't work because you don't get problem bonuses for being the first to confront. But now you don't care. Ha ha. Premier Pinky. Yeah, so... It does require you to be running a farm deck. But if one of those old mains that um, just wasn't very good, if there's a way you can build around that, all right, here we go. And the stat line for this isn't too bad either. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, the real answer here is obviously Paradox Pony. Also a good Paradox. answer. Paradox. Well, okay, hold on, but can you can you get the uh, the Dr. Hooves main? No, the Dr. Hooves has no text on his boosted side. I mean, yeah, go for it. Flip Dr. Hooves. Aw. I will me, I, 100% I, let you do that. I, I, I looked at that card, believe me. Yeah, that's that's one of those things that I guess you kind of have to stare at when you propose anything like this. Yeah, Just, just to make sure. Anyway. Uh, last card, I think? Last card. Uh, don't worry, This it's not a blue card this time. It's not a pink card either. It is an uh, orange event. Thread the needle. Two cost, three wreck. Main phase event. This turn, players need to confront one fewer problems to start a multi-problem face-off to a minimum of one problem. That's a nice troublemaker breakthrough, even though yeah. it's 
in orange, but you know. Not all orange decks. Maybe your opponent's trying to set up their own farm farm yeah, board. Yeah, I mean, there, or... are reasons, there are reasons orange would want to. Yeah. Could always do Grogar main on Buckball strategy, confront that and cause a DFO. Get rid of a troublemaker your opponent might have played and another problem. I think Man, that's that... pretty good. I think that Trader Orange is going to take a real hard look at this and be like, mm. That's actually really strong. Being able to turn to DFO with a single card in hand with your Grogar main if you're running Buckball. If you're going first and your opponent is playing a Confront to Flip main, that's very disrespectful. I mean, if, is there another choice at that point? No. I mean, it's about that as disrespectful as sitting there with, oh, I don't know, Pinky and dumping a small silver stream at their problem and just being like, hi. Hi. Now, if you happen to be running some dilemmas and your opponent has a nice, uh, a nice nasty troublemaker wall in front of you, they're, you're playing against Big Cheese or someone, and they're like, okay, well, here's a dilemma. I'm going to confront that one dilemma with Thread the Needle having been played and get rid of your Troublemaker wall and also face off. That's some, some shade. Man. Burning on cheese here. Don't do There's... that. Or do. It's actually really tasty. This is, this is spicy. I like this. And since Orange oh, normally no. likes playing like large, single, high-value friends, you don't need to build up a whole board to try to break through a TM wall or get through a bunch of eccentric or something like that. Just pick the easy problem. Yeah, just drop a, a Timmy friend at an easy problem, and there you go. Timmy. Yeah, there's also a... I forget which color that problem's in. It's uh, not... Purple, I think? Or is it purple? What, yeah. you're talking about the one that lets you confront that problem multiple times instead of other problems? Yeah. Well, that has no bearing with this card. All this does is change the trigger for multi-problem face-offs. It doesn't, but it still means you might get two points out of the score phase, though. Oh, that's true. I see what you're saying be able to use that problem and then DFO it away so you can get a few extra bonus points. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the real tech play is going to be when you play the troll deck that is green, or that is uh, orange and blue. Green? Why? Green. That is orange and blue, and you Sonic Rain Boom this uh, to allow your opponent to DFO easier. Like, your whole deck is just built around giving your opponent's friends a bunch of power. I'm going to build this deck now. And then what, you just find a way to like infinitely play Matilda and then get no. a 15th point on your no. own turn? No, 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 no. no. You're, so, you're, you're racing. It's blue-orange. You're still going fast. You're just helping your opponent go fast. No, so that would actually be really funny. This is potentially useful as a ridiculous offensive tool in a blue-orange deck where you do that against a control deck that's busy sitting on, oh, I don't know, blackmail or something. Oh, you, f you make them DFO? <laughs> You're like, hmm, that's a it's, shame. It's that's like, oh, that That's a nice little troublemaker wall. It'd be a shame if I made you cause a face-off on your own turn. Um, should we consider making this card immediate? Uh, that would be... I don't no. know. I, well, maybe. Yes, we should you consider it. No, we'll see. We should have we should have everyone test that and see what they think. Yeah, there you go. There's this your, is open beta, remember? There's your first playtesting assignment, everyone. Go see test, if you can break this thing. Test this thing with immediate speed timing instead and see what you think. If you want. If you want. But um whatever you want to do is fine. I don't know. Like, you could build a burst of speed into this kind, or uh, rainbow into this kind of, 
where potentially you could say you may pay one if you do you can play it at immediate speed mm, sure there's things that could be done yeah uh, let's see so i think that's it for the cards although this discussion at the end here i think i do want to return to the open beta document okay Stop it. Browser's misbehaving. Stay up. Okay, so the, the FAQ here is some of the interest or more prickly questions here. Amongst these things, occasionally if you run into a card like this where you're sitting there and looking at it and just being like, oh, I really wish it did that thing. Because it would be so cool. You know what? That's interesting too. That's just as interesting as cards that are messed up or broken combo engines. You know, don't don't propose a card if it's going to turn into some kind of broken combo engine, please. 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 Killing us. No, please. But all of these things, and if you have questions about any of this, Discord. Uh, like it says right at the bottom here, set 13 spoilers in Discord. The feedback, all feedback, is valuable. Other than, hey, can you turn this card into a Trixie? I'm preemptively removing a Trixie for that. Fair enough. Anything else you want to highlight on the open beta for now? I don't think so. Okay. Well, this has been a fun look at some of these cards. It will go ahead and wrap up our discussion for today, though. Uh, we would like to give a big shout out to all of our patrons on Patreon. Thank you so much for your regular support. If you aren't currently a patron and you enjoy what we do, please do consider donating. Doing so enables us to continue making content like this and lets you earn some great perks as a bonus. If you have comments or questions you'd like to send our way, feel free to reach out to us through Facebook, Twitter, or email. If you're a patron, you can also chat live with us on Slack any day, any time. Because our sleep schedules are completely ruined. Mostly because it's 108. I was up at 4 a.m. running an air conditioner. <laughs> Manually. With a hand pump. Yep. Kind of. Finally, if you're looking to watch any of our previous videos, including tournament recordings, you can find them on our YouTube channel, linked just below the stream. With all of that said, thank you to each and every one of our viewers, both here now and watching this recording later. We are, as always, Commentary as Magic. I am, as always, Grand Paws. Big Cheese. Uh, cat and... And Ivory Starlight. And we'll you... see you in a couple weeks. You did that intentionally, didn't you? Yep. That's what I thought. Come to Everfree, if you can. Yep. Uh, no, no, just come. How, how Even long? if you can't. How far out is that? It's like... A month and a half? It's not even that much. Yeah, it's like a month and a half. Yikes. It's getting soon. There's plenty go. of time to plan. Yep. Buy your flights. Buy your toys. Bye. Bye.